So let's get right to it. Today we're gonna talk about how to go viral. Last month alone, we produced over a thousand YouTube shorts, reels, TikToks, whatever you wanna call them. We made them, we produced them, we edited them and pushed them out for at least 20 accounts. We also gained around 20 million views. So I know a little something about going viral, but really I just wanna share with you guys what we learned and the structures that we test to go viral. Now, why would I do something like this? Because I believe that there's enough for us all to win. And the legacy that I'm trying to leave here on this channel is to help as many people impact the world as possible. And I understand that one of the best ways to impact the world right now is through video. So first, let's actually define what going viral means. Like, what is the definition of virality? So going viral is really dependent on the account. What we like to say internally is at least a million views, but this is how we also break it down. If an account has never had a video hit 100,000 views, that's our first step. Now, if an account has had a video reach 100,000 views, but has never had a video reach 500,000 views, now that's our benchmark. Now, if an account has had a video reach at least 100,000 views, then virality for that account is like 500,000 views. And if an account has had a video reach 100,000 views, has had videos hit 500,000 views, our benchmark is trying to get a video to reach a million views. Now, again, that definition of virality means different things for different people, but again, I wanted to define how we define it for our clients and internally in our business. One of our main jobs is to help our clients go viral. And the reason that our clients wanna go viral and that I hope you wanna go viral is because you want attention. In our company, we understand that attention leads to more impact. And the more impact that you can have on people, income starts to follow impact. And so the name of the game here is saying, how can we acquire the most attention as possible? And right now, short form videos and short form content is one of the best ways to acquire attention. And if you're a business owner or content creator or personal brand, you should really be focused right now on building up your personal audience and gaining as much attention as possible. I'll make a whole nother video around attention and the benefits of it, but if you look at people like Kylie Jenner or The Rock or Mr. Beast or Tabitha Brown, you can see how much having an audience has allowed them to benefit financially. Once you can build an audience and amass attention, you can sell whatever you wanna sell into that audience, especially if they know, like, and trust you. And that's what we're trying to do with our clients through short form content. Let's break down the exact structure of a video or how we produce videos to have the most potential to go viral. The first thing that we're thinking about is the topic. Now, I know a lot of people will sit on here and say the most important thing around a video is a hook, but I strongly disagree. The most important thing about the video is actually the topic that you're talking about. Some of the best topics that you can talk about fall in these three areas, health, wealth, and love. Or I heard somebody else say this, like your body, your boo, and your bank account. And with our clients, we like to ask questions in those three areas. Now, we do make some videos for our clients about what they're an expert in, but this probably makes up around 50, maybe 40% of the videos that we actually make. So even use myself for an example. This video right here of me breaking down viral video structures is not something that probably will go viral. The masses don't really care about this video. And that's what we're trying to help our clients do, make videos that all sorts of audiences can relate to. We're trying to make a video for all of those people to actually stop on that would be interesting to them and that they'll actually watch it to the end. Again, why we're trying to do this is to gain the most attention as possible. Once we gain attention, even if the target audience is only 1% of our viewers, I'd rather that 1% be of 10 million than of 100 views. So again, the topic of your video is the most important part. Think about some things that can relate to health, that can relate to wealth, like your finances, how you actually make money, some of the big money mistakes that you've made, um, or relationship advice if you're in one, or maybe other relationships like friendships or parent-child relationships, any kind of like structure or themes, stories that you can tell within those topics will do pretty well. The one little bonus that I'll give here is also pets. For some reason, pets do really, really well on the internet. The second most important part of the video is now the hook. The hook can be set up in two different ways. A lot of people talk about the vocal hook, which I'll talk about here in a second, 
but the visual hook, especially on platforms like Instagram, Facebook, and even YouTube shorts is super important. The visual hook is something that you kind of see here. You see that I have different lights in my background. Maybe you see some different figurines and art figures. I have my microphone pulled into the frame. And so those are all visual hooks that allow somebody, especially even if their sound is defaulted off to say, hey, this kind of looks a little interesting. Like what's going on here? Another part of the visual hook is also the edit. So what we'll put in that first millisecond to a second frame of the edit is super important for our team. Think of it, especially here on YouTube, as almost like the thumbnail. If a lot of people aren't interested in that first little second or that first little frame of thumbnail that they see for that short form video, they'll swipe right past it. So not only be good around the vocal hooks, but be really, really, really intentional around visual hooks. Sometimes when we're working with a client, it'll take us around 45 minutes just to get the scene visually hooky. So once we get the visual hook down, now we're gonna be focused on the vocal hook. Now the vocal hook is really what it sounds like. It's the words that come out of your mouth. And one of the biggest tips for vocal hooks is to actually frame them in the negative. So let's just use me, for example, in this video. If I was making a short form piece of content about making viral videos, I probably wouldn't start my video by saying, here's three tips to make viral videos. Now, a better vocal hook would actually be if your videos only get around 200 to 400 views, here's exactly what you're doing wrong. So you can see what I did there. I framed it a little bit more in the negative to say, here's what you're doing wrong instead of here's some tips. And you can just see my tonality got a little bit more serious and punchy. All those things are very intentional to me having some really strong vocal hooks. The last part that you need to be focused on when creating your viral videos is now the actual structure of the videos. So now once you have a good topic and a good hook, that will allow more people to actually stop on your videos and at least start watching it. Now you need to be intentional around the structure of the actual video to keep that viewer actually watching to the end. We experiment with a ton of different structures in our agency and we'll continue sharing those structures here. But the two best structures that we've learned, again, after producing 2000 reels a month are these two structures. Number one is what I like to call the storytelling structure. The storytelling structure goes a little bit something like this. You have your strong hook in the end and then you insert an I statement, and then you end it with a you statement. How I would start my video might be the hook that I said earlier, and then I would insert a personal story. So it might go something like this. If your video is stuck around 200 to 400 views, here's exactly what you're doing wrong. I was just like you. I started on TikTok in July of 2021, and my first probably 50 videos were only getting around 200 to 300 views until I cracked the code. And the code was really having a stronger hook. And for me, because I'm a little bit monotone, I had to really work on my structure and tonality and my visual hooks. So as you can see, what I just did was I had my strong hook and then I actually inserted a personal story using a lot of I statements, right? As much as you can insert personal stories in there, it's going to give you some credibility. It's also going to allow people to start being hooked into an actual story. And now how you need to end the storytelling structure is with some you statements. So we don't just make the video and just tell our story. We need to make it applicable for the viewer. So after I say my I statements, I then start making you statements. So I might end it by saying, so if you want to get a thousand, 10,000, even a million views like we've been able to get for our clients, you need to really focus on the topics of your videos, the visual hooks and the vocal hooks. But now there's something applicable for the viewer to actually take away. And now there's something applicable for them to maybe even share or save for later. All of those metrics signal to the platform that, hey, Casey just created a good video. Let's share it to more and more people. And then we start going viral. The second structure that we really love, especially for viral videos, is the how-to structure. The how-to structure is really just as simple as it sounds. It's gonna be a short video, but it's gonna give somebody just clear step-by-steps. So you're not giving personal stories, you're not giving lots of examples, you're just giving somebody the step-by-steps on how to make, in this example, a viral video. Again, same hook, and now I'll just get into the three things. You need to come up with a good topic, you need to have visual hooks, and you need to have vocal hooks. You also need to have a good structure. 
So I might just go through my actual step by step by step. Now, one of the cool things that you can do in that how-to structure is actually do something that we like to call a mid-roll CTA. And I don't know why I just said we like to call it that, a lot of people call it that, but it's the CTA that you're gonna do in the beginning before you actually get into the steps. The CTA, if you don't know what that is, is just a call to action. For some videos, it can be comment, for some videos, it can be follow or subscribe. For some people, it can be save. Whatever kind of like action you want your viewer to take, you can include that not at the end of the video, but in the middle of the video or specifically for this structure before you actually start giving the steps of your process. The last little bonus that I'll give for the how-to structure is to make that first step super intriguing. However you can structure that first little step to be super captivating and make a viewer go like, ah, oh, like I've never heard that. That is going to set your video apart and help you get more viral. So again, topic, hook, structure. Those are the three important pieces of a viral video. The other tip that I'll give you is to actually start consuming more content and actually be strategic about the consumption. You know, ask yourself, what made this video good? What made this video bad? Let me know how you like this video, subscribe, like, do all the things, and let me know what other questions you have about creating short form content.